Hello, everybody. I'm back once again just to remind you, just another quick reminder. Jesus Christ is coming. And we must be ready. We must be ready. Jesus Christ is coming. For real this time, y'all. <laughs> I know that, um, I know over the years we've heard that so many times. People have set dates. People have set dates. And, you know, dates for the rapture. Of course, nothing happened. I could have told them that. It wasn't nothing going to happen. I mean, you know, Christ wasn't coming on that date. But he's coming this time. Okay, but I'm not on here to talk about that, so I'm going to get right into what I'm talking about. I got on here to talk about, okay? Okay, I got to admit something here. Um, I, get so, I get a little agitated. I get a little agitated with some of other religions. Yes, I'll just say it that way. I, I get a little agitated with some with other religions due to their idiotic beliefs. Idiotic beliefs. Especially people that was raised up in the church and in Christianity and they their parents was uh, their parents knew God they knew Christ and these people leave the church and go into some strange religion I've known Christians some Christians to leave the church and go into Islam Wow. They'll leave the church and go, they'll leave Christ and go talk to Allah, whoever Allah is. If there is Allah. And of course, we got the Hebrew Israelites now. We got some other sects, S E C T S, S E C T S, sects sect can't pronounce it but we got a bunch of little strange groups out there now and some of the churches y'all a lot of these churches are getting strange too a lot of these strange doctors and you're gonna see more of that you're gonna see more of that as we as we enter into the last days i guess i'm a last day teacher because this is what i this is what i focus on the most and I try to help people prepare themselves for these days that we're in and the days that are ahead. You're going to see more of this strange stuff, man. Some of these people are doing some strange things in the church already. But they're getting, um, here's what I, well, here's what annoyed me the other day when I was listening. I was, I was on the internet and I was listening to this uh, Hebrew Hebrew Israelite people, whatever they are, I, I don't know a whole lot about them. I do believe black, the black people in America are the Hebrew Israelites. I do believe that. I believe we are the Jews. I believe we are Jews. I believe we are the Jews. I believe the the people in Israel right now are the Israelis. But I, I believe that we are the Jews. There's a difference. We are of Judah, the tribe of Judah. I don't know if you all noticed, but in the Bible, Israel and Judah is always uh, listed, listed separate from each other. Okay, you know that's that's just the nature of of the whole relationship. Blacks are always separate from the whites in some way or another. You know, and so even in the Bible, Judah is listed always listed separate. Judah and it's listed Judah and Israel. Or Judah and Jerusalem. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, that's, that's what I want to talk about. Listen, as New Testament believers, you are permitted. We are New Testament. We are on a new covenant. We are not under the old covenant. That does not to say that we don't obey some of the old covenant. Okay, uh, the teachings of Isaiah should be obeyed and understood. Same with Ezekiel. Same with uh, Proverbs. 
Same with, uh, but like the, specifically the dietary laws, the dietary laws that the Jews had to live by or the uh, Israelis had to live by or the Israelites back then had to live by. We don't have to live by those dietary laws anymore. Don't let people tell you that you have to live, you have to eat a certain way. Or Yahweh is not pleased with you. Now, if you eat in a way where it destroys your health, well, yeah, he don't want you doing that. Okay? Okay, he had to, he had to deal with me about eating so much junk food. Soda pop, cookies, cookies, cake, ice cream, all that stuff. Okay? I, it kept making me sick. And eventually, and I'm still working on it. I, I'm not, I'm not, I like all that sweet stuff. But the dietary laws that, that was in the Old Testament, we don't have to live by that anymore. Okay, so don't let people come to you and tell you that if you eat pork, uh, you're going to hell. If you eat pork, you're not, you're not going to go to heaven. If you eat a snake, if you eat a dog, if you eat a okay. Personally, I don't. I wouldn't eat no dog. But God has given people permission if they want to eat a dog, they can eat one. You can't condemn people for eating pork, for eating a pig, for eating a rat. If that's all they got, okay. There are a lot of children. They don't get anything else but a snake. There are a lot of children in other countries. All they have to eat is a snake. Okay. God going to turn them away? God going to refuse them? No, he's not. You people need to stop teaching this foolishness. We're not under the new, the Old te Testament anymore, the dietary laws of the Old Testament. It is utter foolishness. Okay? We are New Testament believers. And all you Christians out there that, that are New Testament Christians and New Testament believers, remember the scriptures I'm going to give you today. We are not under that old covenant dietary law. You can eat pork if you want to. You can eat a snake. You can eat spiders if you want to, if you need to. Okay? It's not a sin. But what's a sin is gluttony. That's a sin. Overeating. What's a sin is eating stuff that you know is, is detrimental to your health. Like a lot of this candy they got, a lot of these uh, little Debbie cakes and uh, this cheap, cheap cakes they got on the market, and uh, a lot of that junk. Okay, a lot of those potato chips and soda pops. A lot of those so that stuff is detrimental to your health. Now, if you eat eat some every now and then, that's fine. You know, soda pop is not made to be drank every single day. Okay, it's a, it's a celebrate, it's a, it's a celebrity drink, it's a, it's a drink for celebration. It's a, it's a every now and then drink. But you drink it every day for, for a period of time, it's going to make you sick. There's going to be some side effects, okay? Bad side effects. Um, now, we are not under those old dietary laws. I'm going to give you some scripture here, okay? Don't let people tell you that you can't eat pork. I'm going to eat pork. I'm going to eat bacon. Okay, you the one that's missing out. I love bacon and I really like bacon and eggs. Okay. I used to like chitlins a lot, but I'm kind of turned off on them now. I don't know why. It's just, I like the way they taste, but the thought of eating chitlins is just, I don't know. I'm losing my appetite for them. But anyway, if you want to eat them, that's fine. If you want to eat them, it's okay to eat chitlins. Okay. Now, I'm going to give you some New Testament scriptures. All right? There's a lot of them. There's a lot of them, man. I don't know what, where you people are getting this. Where are you people at now? Are you still in the Old Testament? Listen, the Bible said that if you keep the whole law, but you offend in one point of the law, if you just offend in one commandment, he said, the scripture said, you are guilty. 
of breaking the whole law. So by you, because you don't eat pork or don't eat certain food, that ain't gonna make that ain't gonna get you into heaven. They say well, you you don't I don't go to church on Sundays. I go to church on Sat on Saturdays. That's not gonna get you into heaven either. Because you're a seven day Adventist and you go to church, that's not gonna get you into heaven. Okay? What about all the other commandments that you've broken and that you break? You're still going to need Christ to pay for all that. Okay? No matter what what you what law you keep, or what you uh, what law you uh, break, you're going to need Christ to pay for those sins. None of that is going to get you into heaven. Okay? Um. Let me start right here. Proverbs 30 and 11. It says, There are those who curse their fathers and do not bless do not bless their mothers. Those who are pure in their own eyes and yet are not cleansed of their filth. Because you don't eat pork, that doesn't make you holy. Okay? That's just your own self-righteousness. Jesus Christ said in Matthew 15 and 11, he said, a man is not defiled, Matthew 15 and 11, a man is not defiled by what goes into his mouth. That doesn't defile you. Okay? If you eat pork or snake or, or, or spider or shrimp or, that doesn't defile you. All right? Jesus Christ said this. Jesus Christ said this. He said, that doesn't defile you. Now, you're going to believe someone else over Jesus Christ? You're going to believe Allah over Jesus Christ? Or the Hebrew Israelites? No way, man. He said, that doesn't defile you. But the words that come out of your mouth, that's what defile you. He said, the food you eat, it just goes into your intestines and... Uh, you release it through your stool. It doesn't defile you. Here's another scripture Christ gave us. He said, if you, when you're out on a journey or a mission, he said, at the house that you reside, he said, eat whatever they put before you. Bless it. And eat whatever they put before you. Okay? Okay. He also said, be generous to the poor and everything will be clean for you. These are the words of Christ. These are the words of God. These are the words of the master teacher. Don't come to me with this foolishness about we shouldn't eat pork and we shouldn't eat. Now, you know, I know it's a lot of chemicals and all kind of junk they put in the food now. You know, we can, but we can't. A lot of this stuff, we can't avoid it. We, we can't avoid it. Okay, we just have to bless our food and, and eat it and do the best we can and move on. If we can't afford anything else, there are a lot of people can't afford to eat lamb and beef or whatever types of other vegetables and meats that are kosher. Okay. Uh, some people can't afford that. But God has given us permission to eat what we want. Go to Acts 10 and 1. Peter, in a vision, God gave Peter a vision of these many different animals that the Jews and the Israelites considered unclean, too unclean to eat, like pigs, camels, okay, shrimp, rabbit, okay. He gave him a, in a vision, Peter saw all these animals. And God told them, get up, Peter, dog was in there, get up, Peter, slay and eat. Peter was like, no, man, I can't eat that stuff. That's unclean. And God said, don't call 
this that I, this thing that I may these things that I may clean. He said I made these things clean. He said don't call these things unclean. That's talking to you too. Okay, that's talking to you too. Don't call this stuff unclean. God said He has made these things clean. Okay, now these animals. When Peter was see, here's the thing. This this has a twofold meaning here. Okay, animals in the Old Testament represented the characteristics of people. Okay, for instance, a dog. The dog represented uh, the homosexual. The dog represented a person of low character. The dog also represented the Gentile. Okay, the Gentile. And so God didn't want them eating this uh, because he wanted to keep them separated from the world and from uh, unclean people and unclean things. He wanted them separated unto himself. He wanted them to be uh, different from everybody else. These animals represented certain characteristics in people. They also represented uh, spiritual beings. You know, the lion, of course. The lion represents spiritual beings. Uh, Satan and uh, the serpent represent, you know, they didn't want to, they couldn't eat snakes because these snakes represented evil spirits and there are certain birds they couldn't eat because those birds represented uh, evil spirits. Okay? In the Old Testament. All right? And they represented certain characteristics of people. You know, you ever heard people call other, another person, man, he's a dirty rat. Because he has a sneaky, conniving, underhanded uh, way about him. Rat nature. Okay? But God said, see, God, after Christ died and rose, now he said, I'm accepting the Gentiles too. Okay? These animals represented the Gentiles, the characteristics of the Gentiles. But Christ said, now I'm accepting them too now. I'm cleaning them and washing them up and, and, and making them right too. Okay? And at the same time, it had this other meaning. It just simply means now the animals, you can eat these animals now. Did y'all read that? Go over there and read it. Read it. Acts 10, 1 through 15. Read it. Acts 10, 1 through 15. God told Peter, do not call the things that I may clean unclean anymore. Don't call the pig unclean. The pig is not unclean. Put that thing, put some salt and pepper on that thing and put it on the grill. Okay? Now, I mean, I got to admit, there are some... There are some things about the pig I, I don't like either. But when I get hungry, I forget all about that. When I get really hungry, and I'll be grateful I had that meat. Okay? It's the same with chicken. I mean, chicken disgusts me sometimes just looking at them. But chicken tastes really good. And I'm very, very grateful for it. Listen, y'all. Read your Bible. Okay, read your Bible. You are New Testament believers. You're not Old Testament believers. Okay? If the New Testament agrees with the Old Testament, then you are to do that. But if the old, if the New Testament do not agree with that part of the Old Testament or or does do not repeat the Old Testament, you don't have to do that. Okay? You don't have to do what the Old Testament says if the New Testament don't repeat it. It has to be in the New Testament. Okay, because we are New Testament believers. All right, now listen. Read Acts 10, 1 through 15, okay? <clears throat> it tells you very clearly, very plainly, that the animals now are not considered unclean anymore. Okay? They're clean. You can eat these animals. Now, if there's another scripture that says, wait a minute. Okay, now listen. If you think eating pork is unclean, then it's unclean to you, not me. Because that's what you think. Okay, that, where's my scripture at here? It says, uh, 
Where is it at? Where is it at? Where is it at? Titus 1.15. It says, To the pure, all things are pure. But to the corrupt and unbelieving, nothing is pure. If you think it's impure, then it's impure for you. Not for me. If you think rabbit, shrimp, it shouldn't be eaten, rat shouldn't be eaten, then you shouldn't eat it. Because it's going to defile your conscience. It's going to make you feel guilty. Okay? Go to Romans 4 and 1. It says, except the one who's, who's accept, 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 receive. The one whose faith is weak without quarreling or disputable matters. Listen. It's saying that you may think that it's wrong to eat certain foods, but the Bible tells me to accept you, okay, without disputing with you, without quarreling with you, okay? And then the second verse says, for one believeth that he may eat all things, another who is weak eateth herbs. The person who's weak, the person that's not strong in the faith, the person who do not understand, understand the scripture, he's weak. So the I'm supposed to receive you, I'm supposed to receive you without quarreling with you. Okay? But just say, come on in, man, it's all right. The one who eats everything must not treat with contempt. I must not treat you with contempt. The one who does not. And the one who does not eat everything must not judge the one who does. Don't judge me because I eat pork. I'm not going to treat you with contempt because you don't. Don't judge me because don't tell me that I'm uh, y'all's not pleased with me because I eat pork or because I eat rabbit. That's what the scripture says, man. This is New Testament. We are not Old Testament. My goodness. Okay? We're not, I'm not Old Testament. I don't, I don't want to live my life out of Old Testament. All right? It says, uh, and the one who does not eat everything must not judge the one who does, for God has accepted both of them. Okay. All right. Then it says, who are you to judge someone else's servant anyway? Okay. I can't judge you. You can't ju judge me. It says, to their own master, servants stand, to their own master, servants stand or fall. And they will stand for the Lord is able to make them stand. All right. One person considers one day more sacred than another. Something like the Seventh Day Adventist. He could, he thinks he thinks he's saved because he go to uh, church on Sabbath. And a lot of these, a lot of black people now, they they've discovered that we are the Hebrew Israelites, and so or the Jews rather, I'll say the Jews. And so now they're going to church on the Sabbath on Saturday, and now they want to condemn us for going to church on Sunday. The scripture just says, who are you to judge another man's servant? Okay, and it says here in the in the fifth verse, it says, one person consider one day more sacred than another. You might consider the Sabbath more sacred than Sunday or Saturday. You might consider Saturday more sacred than Sunday. Okay. Another considers every day alike. See, to me, to me, the Sabbath now is every day. That's the way I understand it now as a New Testament believer. We rest in God now every day because we believe him now every day. We trust him in now every day. See, the children of Israel did not enter into his rest. They died in the desert because they did not believe him. They did not trust him. So they died in the desert. They never entered into his rest. Ain't, that's what the scripture says. The rest is not in a day, people. It's not in a Saturday. Okay? 
The rest is in Jesus Christ. My goodness. This is, I mean, I, this is, this, this is so plain. You can't explain it no clearer than this. The, your rest is not on a, on a Saturday. Okay? Because who, ain't no guarantee you're going to rest on a Saturday. If you're in a war-torn country, you're not going to rest on a Saturday. If you're in a country where there's, where there's war, but you know, if you're in a ghetto, you ain't going to rest on a Saturday. Your rest is in Christ. Okay? Each of them should be fully convinced in their own mind. I'm convinced in my own mind that my, my day of rest is in Christ, not on a Saturday. I'm com fully convinced in my own mind that if I eat pork, I'm fine. If I eat a rabbit, that's good. God is not going to cast me away. Because he said, he said, do not call the animals unclean that he have made clean. So you got to be persuaded in your own mind. And stop trying to persuade somebody else to think like you. Okay? Especially this Allah, these Allah people. These Allah people, they will hate you for eating Farrakhan and all them. They will hate you for eating something that you have to eat. You can't afford to eat the way he eat. You may not you may not can afford to eat like he eat. Okay? Farrakhan's sitting on a little piece of money, and some of those other people are too. So you, some people have to eat what they can get. All right? Whoever regards one day as special does so to the Lord. If you regard the Sabbath, if you regard Saturday a special day, then that, you do that unto the Lord. Okay? Whoever eats meat does so unto the Lord. If I eat meat, then I do that unto the Lord. For they give thanks to God. And whosoever abstains does so to the Lord and give thanks to God. If you abstain from eating pork, do it as unto the Lord and give thanks. That's your business. I'm not to judge you for that. And you're not to judge me for that, for, for not eating it. You're not to judge me for not observing Saturday. I work on Saturday. That we're not that we're not under that. See, why are we not being stoned then? If 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 it's still why God is not striking us dead for working on Saturday if we are still under that? Because we're not under that anymore. We're not under that anymore. Our day of rest is in Christ. Now we'll get struck dead if we don't believe Him. Eventually, it's gonna kill us, just like it did the children of Israel when they was in the desert. If you don't trust him. But working on a Saturday, man, that ain't nothing. You know, eating pork, that's, that's Old Testament stuff, people. Okay? And there's a scripture that says, that tells us that we should keep the Sabbath Forever. I can't quote it exactly the way it goes, but it says that the Sabbath will remain forever. It's true, but it remains. It 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 it, it it's going to remain. Uh, it's going to it's going to end in one form and begin in another form. Okay. See, we're keeping the Sabbath now by living and believing Christ and living in Christ. And believing him and trusting him and just relying on him. We're keeping the Sabbath now. But the time is going to come when this period here is going to end, just like the Old Testament ended. In the Old Testament, the Sabbath was kept by observing Saturday. Now you don't have to do that anymore. Now you keep the Sabbath by observing God's spirit and trusting and relying on his spirit. And on what Christ have done for us, you rest in what you rest and you believe in what He has done for us. Okay. After this, in the New Age or the Golden Age, the Sabbath is the one thousand years. Okay, that's the Sabbath, people. 
you ain't gonna be going to have to go to church on no Saturday in the in the uh, one thousand year reign. I mean, you might, but you won't have to. Okay. The Old Testament was a, like a foreshadow of things to come. Okay, it was just a foreshadow of things to come. Okay, Romans 14 and 7. It says, For none of us live for ourselves alone, and none of us die for ourselves alone. Okay, so what I do affect you, what you do affect me, and uh I should, if, if eating something offend you, then I shouldn't eat it. I'm not going to eat it in front of you. And so on and so forth. I'll just tell you to go home. Okay? And I just won't discuss it with you. That's the way I would do it. I ain't going to, I wouldn't sit here and tell you, okay, man, I'm not going to ever eat pork again because I know you don't like pork. I'm not going to tell you that. <laughs> okay? If we live, it says, if we live, we live for the Lord. And if we die, we die for the Lord. So, whether we live, whether we die, we belong to the Lord. Okay? For this reason, Christ died. And, okay, let me see. Wait a minute. I think I'm, I think I'm moved up, went over a little bit here. Okay, I'm going to skip down to the 14th verse. It says, I am convinced, being fully persuaded. I'm convinced, being fully, fully persuaded in the Lord Jesus that nothing is unclean in itself. This is New Testament. Are you a New Testament believer or Old Testament believer? Because if you're an Old Testament believer, you're going to be lost. Okay? You cannot be saved through the Old Testament. You cannot. Okay? The New Covenant is in Christ. It says, I'm convinced, being fully persuaded in the Lord Jesus, that nothing is unclean in itself. But if anyone regards something as unclean, then for that person, it is unclean. If you regard pork as unclean, then it's unclean for you. Okay? All right? 15 verse says, If your brother or sister is distressed because of what you eat, you are no longer acting in love. Now, it's telling me that if, if let's say for instance, if, if, if someone see me drinking alcohol, and it's, it causes them some distress or it grieves them or it causes them to fall back or stumble. Then I'm to put the alcohol away or at least don't drink it in front of them or at least don't discuss it in front of them or something. Okay. But if thy brother be grieved with thy meat, now walkest thou not charitable. Okay, in other words, you're not walking in love now. See, this this is what annoys me. Just be honest about it. I would hate to stop eating certain foods because my brother or my sister is weak. Okay, I would hate to do that. But I guess if I had to do it, I would do it. I hopefully I would. I pray to God I would have the strength enough to do it. I wouldn't be weak. Okay. But see, there are some people, the scripture said they're weak in the faith. They they don't understand that you are the scripture said all things, everything is permissible. Okay? Everything is permissible. Although all things are not beneficial. But it's permissible. But they don't understand that. So I might have to put my meat down because of them. That's what the scripture is saying here. But if thy brother be grieved, let me get, but if your brother be grieved because of your food, you are no longer walking in love. Do not destroy with your food the one for whom Christ has died. Okay, that's telling me that if my food or my eating uh cause you to stumble or sin that I'm to put my food down. Okay, I'm to stop drinking that wine or whatever I'm doing that's causing you because you feel like that is wrong and it's causing you to be grieved or stumble. Okay? Because you don't understand. See, I understand that is good, but because you don't understand the scripture is telling me 
you need to put your food down. So if I know you coming over or something, or or or, or if if eating pork offends you, then I just won't eat it in front of you. Now to tell you that I will, I'm going to stop eating it. The only thing I can say is God help me, help me, help me. Okay, because I mean this is food is something is it's addictive. And you're not gonna you're not gonna just stop eating some things just overnight. Therefore, do not let what you know is is good be spoken of as evil. Okay. Now, let me see where I'm at. Okay, it's saying here because it says here, for the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. So it's saying to both both of us here that don't let your food destroy yourself or your brother or your sister. Although it's permitted. It's permitted. Okay, the, You can eat these things. They're permitted. But there are some people don't understand. So because they don't understand, it's saying don't let this uh, be careful. Don't, don't cause them to fall. Don't cause them to stumble because uh Food is not everything, okay? The kingdom of God is not food, okay? And food and drink, but it's righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. All right. All right, 1 Corinthians 10, 23, 27, it says, listen what this says, 1 Corinthians 8 and 7, it says, but not everyone possesses this knowledge. Let me back up a little bit. Well, let me see. Let me see here. Um, okay. Eight, First Corinthians 8 and 7 says, But not everyone possesses this knowledge. Some people are still so accustomed to idols that when they eat sacrificial food, they think food has been sacrificed to idols. They think of it as having been sacrificed to a God. Okay? And since their conscience is weak, it is defiled. Okay? Since their conscience is weak, now they're on, they're on a guilt trip. All right? They're feeling guilty. And they're feeling condemned. All right? They're feeling ashamed. All right? They're feeling ashamed and guilty and condemned. But it goes on to say in verse 8, But food does not bring us near to God. I don't care if you don't eat pork or if you eat certain types of food. It don't bring you near to God. This is what the scripture says. We are New Testament believers. Okay? It don't bring you near to God. We are no better and we are no worse if we do not eat and no better if we do eat. Come on, y'all. Be careful, however, that the exercise of your rights does not become a stumbling block to the weak. Okay? It's okay for me to eat. The Bible said all things are permissible. But not any, everything else. Yeah, it's permissible for me to eat, but I got to be careful not to trip you up because you think it's wrong. So I got to be watchful for myself. I got to be watchful myself and make sure that I don't cause you to stumble. Because I'm over here chopping down on this ham and you sitting over there looking and you think I'm doing something wrong and I call myself a righteous man. I am a righteous man. It's just your mind is bent. Your mind is not uh, the way it should be. You, you're the one that's got something not right. You, you see what I'm saying? So because your mind is not the way it should be, you, don't, you like understanding. I have to put my ham sandwich down and don't offend you. That's what the scripture is saying. So I'm, don't just, you know, I had an old mother in the church years ago. We were was, we was studying on this. And she said, I'll just tell you to go home. 
That's what she said. She said, I'll just tell you to go home. But the script is saying, you know what, if, if my Sam Sam, if my ham sandwich offend you and cause you to uh, be weak and cause you to stumble and all this, cause you to sin, uh, then I'll just put it away. Okay? Because it says, it says, uh, only be careful telling me now, only be careful that this liberty, my liberty, that I have to eat whatever I want, this power to choose does not somehow become a stumbling block that is a temptation to sin to the weak in conscience. Okay? Okay, so you might, you might, for whatever reason, you might look at this food and say, man, we shouldn't eat that food. Man, we shouldn't eat that food. Man, that, that food, uh, it, uh, Certain people, they, they did something to that food, you know. I, I got to admit now, there's some food I wouldn't, I wouldn't eat. I wouldn't chance it because there are people, in, like in those third world countries, they put all kind of voodoo stuff on that food. But it, but if I have to eat it and that's all they eat, eat I'm just going to bless it and eat it. Okay, it ain't going to bother me. All right, but some people, they can't do it because they really, they think something's going to happen to them. All right, I'm gonna give you one more scripture. Set First Timothy four, First Timothy four one through four. You read it. You read it when you get a chance. First Timothy four one through four. It says, "In the latter days, some would depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils." And also in the fourth verse, they go on to say that uh, they will also teach people not to marry the Catholic Church. Teaching people don't marry. Okay. And to abstain from certain foods. Islam and the Israelites. To abstain from certain foods. The scripture says in the last days you're going to get this this kind of stuff. Teaching. Okay. Read um, 1 Timothy 4, 1 through 4. Okay. In the last days... People are going to teach you not to marry, teach you to abstain from certain types of food. All right? It's false, it's false teaching. It's false teaching. Now, if you, I mean, if you read the New Testament, man, man and, you, and you just, and you refuse the New Testament, I don't know what to tell you. Because you're, we're under this, we're under the New Covenant now. We live by the new covenant, not by the old covenant. If the if the if the old if the new covenant don't say it, we're not we we don't have to live by it. Okay. If the new covenant don't uh, teach us to do it, we don't have to live by it. Now, First Timothy six, three, and six. Okay, look what 1 Timothy 6 and 3 says. If anyone teaches you otherwise, okay, like Islam, those Muslims, the Hebrew Israelites, even the Catholic Church, if anyone teaches, teaches otherwise and does not agree with the sound instruction of our Lord, Jesus Christ and to God the teaching, you know, I just gave, I gave you some scriptures that Jesus Christ said. He said, what goes in the mouth don't defile you, right? That's what he said. And I gave you some other scriptures here too. All right, he said, be generous to the poor and everything, everything will be clean for you. All right. It says, if anyone teaches otherwise and does not agree to the sound instruction of the Lord Jesus Christ and to the godly teaching, they are conceited. The Bible says these people are conceited and understand nothing. This is what the Bible said. They are conceited and understand nothing. They have an unhealthy interest in controversies and quarrels about words that result in envy, strife, malice, uh, malicious talk, evil suspicions. Okay? 
Did you get that? And constant friction between people of corrupt minds who have been robbed of their truth. Okay? Yeah. You, you might have became a Hebrew Israelite, but you've been robbed of your truth. You may have become a, a, a Muslim, but you have been robbed of your truth. And who think that godliness is a means of financial gain. But godliness is contentment and is great gain. Okay? So if anybody come to you teaching anything else other than what Christ has already taught us about food and what Paul has taught us about food. The Bible said these people are conceited and they know nothing. All right? They are full of, they are argumentative and full of quarrel, quarreling. What is another word for conceit? Conceited. Full of pride. He is proud, knowing nothing but sick about questions and stripes of words from which arise envies, contentions, blasphemes, evil suspicion. People listen. People to come to you and try to teach you something that is clearly Christ have taught us differently, and they want to teach you. They want to teach you something other than what Christ, or teach you something against what Christ have already taught us. Just you know, just get away from them. Don't listen to them. Okay. Don't listen to them. They, they, they are full of continuous contention and argue, arguing all the time. And all they're going to do is destroy your peace. All right. That's all I got. That's all I got. Acts 10, 1 through 15, Matthew 15, 11, Mark 7, 19, Luke 10, 7 and 8. Uh, Luke 11, 41, 41, oh, 41, 41, I'm sorry. Romans 14, 1 through 23. Now, in uh, 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 Romans 14, uh, you need to read that to all the way to the 23rd verse. Romans chapter 14, 1 through 23, Okay. And you can see in the 23 verse, it says, But whosoever has doubt is condemned by they, if they eat, because their eating is not from, not from faith. And everything that does not come from faith is sin. Listen, you can eat, if you, you, you can eat and you don't do it in faith, it's a sin. If you're eating something and you really believe you shouldn't be eating it, it's a sin. Although it, it may not be anything wrong with it, but in your mind it is. Okay, so anyway, uh, Romans 14, 1 through 23, 1 Corinthians 8, 7, 1 Corinthians 10, 23 to 27, Titus 1 and 15, 1 Timothy 4, 1 through 4. 1 Corinthians 10, 23. Okay? Look up these scriptures and study these scriptures as New Testament believers. Not Old Testament. We're not Old Testament. All right. Jesus Christ is coming. Jesus Christ is coming. Get ready for the millennial reign. Are you ready for the millennial reign? Do you want to be free? Free from this body. Hmm. Free from this body. Free from having to go to work. So we ain't going to have to go to work. You're not going to have to go to work. You're not going to have to. You're going to do the kind of work you want to do in the millennial reign. Not the kind you have to do. Won't that be great? You're going to do the kind you want to do. All right. Uh, we want to thank you all for watching. And uh, 
Uh, we got more videos coming. We got more videos coming. I'm, I'm trying. I'm trying to be consistent every day because I, I got a lot of them. All right. So, all right. Thank you all for watching, and uh, uh, let me know. Write me. Let me know what you think. Okay. Thank you.